Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Isen Gupta and we are here in the fourth installment of our week on fashion in the post-independence India. We are already um, um, discussing some of these aspects of this, this new idea of redefining textiles in the post-independence India and we have looked into some of the designers interventions and how they have put an honest effort in terms of redefining the meaning of certain kind of textiles which have been generationally practiced in the Indian subcontinent. Now, with those discussions, let us look into this other example and that is by Gorang Shah, this Hyderabad based designer and um, of course that I mean he has been experimenting with a number of different weaving styles and then pattern making and everything else in uh, various parts of southern India and other parts of India. But then this particular collection that is called Chitravali in which we see that there was a seamless merging of Kanjipuram silk. Uh, and then also this Kalamkari uh, drawing. So this is something that came up in this uh, uh, designer collection in Chitravali and this this image that we have on screen that is from this runway show uh, um, um, and then uh, in, in 2017. And in this one what we see that this kanji silk is utilized for making the base of this material that when and then that is stitched into this tailored made of course this dress and of course when we see that the kanji silk is there we do not really associate that with tailored fabric but then with the designer's intervention we see how this new meanings are then given to this this uh, traditional forms of textiles then what we also see in this textile is uh, i mean of course in this dress is this in this part of this textile it's extensively painted and this painting that we see it's there it is done on the silk fabric and after the silk fabric is woven in kanchipuram with the weavers and then it is brought to the uh, the the artisans in Sri Kalahasti in in Andhra Pradesh and uh, Sri Kalahasti as I have already mentioned that is well known for making Kalamkari hangings those temple hangings and so this is the place where we find that Gorang Shah as he had noted during an interview that how he had worked with more than 40 households and sort of um, through this trial and error process because this kind of uh, image making like doing doing all those extensive figurative drawing on these textiles and then sort of making them into this tailored made fabric I mean textile or dress is something that that takes a lot of different kind of effort because it's not just about executing the images and wrapping it around the body but then like the tailoring um, essentials and then like all the other intricacies that needs to go hand in hand with it so a number of uh, trial and error experiments that took place before like I mean this kind of result emerged and and the result in which we see that I mean this this images that those were created by this Kalamkari drawings are actually taken from Ajanta murals and this Ajanta murals which we know that to be uh, highly populated with uh, uh, human bodies and then a number of those figurative motifs and interactive highly interactive narrative figurative motifs are then brought into this uh, in the folds of this garment and then uh, how this this merging of one technique of the Kalamkari drawing with the uh, Kanchipuram silk making all of them they come together but then the content of these drawings are also different from both these traditions. So it, it, it adds a different layer to uh, um, this, this, this kind of garment. So this garment or like I mean this collection becomes a unique uh, um, um, sort of um, it, it sort of gives a unique identity to this kind of dresses which draw from different sources but then do not really confine to any of them. So this is these are the other kind of experiments that we see and this kind of experiments also sort of make us think about the perimeters of the, um, the generational practices and what one can do with them. So when we look at this kind of experiments, we also understand that they also have a history. So if we go back to some of those ideals of Nelly Setna, Ritan Mujumdar and people who were working in 1960s, 1970s and later on, but then we also see people like Archana Shah and of course the others 
who were like constantly sort of making the effort in terms of uh, reaching out to the artisans and treating them respectfully. But then there were also some of the other attempts which took place in the 1980s and that made a drastic difference in terms of how we see the experiments those took place in the sector of Indian textiles. And those would be those decade long Vishwakarma exhibitions. The Vishwakarma exhibitions that took place between 1981 to 1991 were those planned exhibitions by the, it was planned by the government of India and there we find that it sort of broadened the road for um, artisan, designer, scholar collaboration uh, and, and of course that I mean what kind of result it can yield from it. So, in the left side, in the upper left side of the screen, we have a cover page from this book that is called The Master Weavers and this book was published, it was a catalogue, it was published which was after this 1981 exhibition that was Festival of India in Britain. And during this exhibition what we find that for the last 2-3 years, I mean before 1981, from the late 1970s, a number of those weaver service centers which were established in 1956-1957, they started working with uh, um, the, the regional textile makers and that can be a group of weavers, dyers, embroiders, uh, brocade weavers and so on. And in this case what happened that it is not just the people from weaver center and the artisans, but then there were also people who advised certain kind of design interventions. Then there were also group of scientists and other people who would suggest people about the dye recipes to expand the color scheme which were utilized in the field of natural dyeing. So all those different kind of interventions took place during this time and the some of the people who were involved in this uh, making these exhibitions possible were Pupul Jaikar and then very importantly uh, Martan Singh or Mapu and then uh, and then later on we also find that Rajiv Sethi was uh, um, also also involved in it. So all these three figures we find them to be crucial for making these exhibitions happen. And this this uh, uh, this Master Weaver exhibition or this Vishwakarma exhibitions as as we see that that started from. 1981. So, all these exhibitions, most of these exhibitions took place outside of India. So, starting with Britain and then 1985, 1986, around that time we see that the festival of India in USA that took place and then in the some of the Scandinavian countries in Russia and so on. So, by that we find that a number of those textiles which were created during these exhibitions were displayed all across the world and it was a way for proudly proclaiming that what India is able to produce. And we see the term Vishwakarma is also very important in this case because Vishwakarma is considered to be this Hindu god of artisanal practices and of course like craftsmanship and machinery and so on. So in that case that the Vishwakarma exhibitions that was when these exhibitions were dedicated to this Hindu god of craftsmanship is that also says something about the quality of the products or like I mean the objects which were displayed in this exhibition. So the finest of the textiles which were produced out of this kind of this artisan designer collaborations were displayed as part of this exhibitions. And in the right corner of the screen we have an image that is from this recent exhibition that is called Vignet Vishwakarma Clothing Art and Artistry. And this was an exhibition that took place in Bangalore in uh, 2022 and uh, in this exhibition some 25 textiles which were originally displayed as part of the Vishwakarma exhibitions were re-displayed and for people to see them. And my intention for adding this image here is just to give a sense of the scale of these textiles. So in terms of the experiments what we see that this was certainly one of the concern that the designers, artisans and the other stakeholders that they had is to sort of display the skill in a particular kind of scale sort of which is magnificent which also sort of encompasses the viewers within its fold. So in this one shows that I mean this large Kalamkari hanging in which Buddha is shown 
at the center stage and meditating under this Bodhi tree and then we see all the narratives which are sort of surrounding him and it's a gigantic as we can see by sort of comparing the viewers scale of this textile is something that was made something that was experimented with the scale extensively in this exhibitions. Some of the other textiles that we see there in this exhibitions would be like this, the one that we have in the of course in the left side of the screen in which we see that screen printed images of birds those were there in this textile and again we see that screen printing is something that was coming up in the textile sectors more and more in the 20th century and in this one we see that experiments with screen printing and also that the kind of image of these birds that we see on this textile in the left side are with, with those hatch drawings and then of course that it has this very drawing like quality almost that smudging of the pencil or and then smudging of the pencil and also like using hatch line with pens all those qualities are then brought to textile by the mean of silk screen printing except for silk screen printing perhaps like copper plate printing could have been incorporated to create this kind of effect which is otherwise not possible to create on textiles. So this is something we find that how the, the drawings from natural history collections were then sort of like mapped back on the textiles whereas we find that the uh, images of birds, animals, creepers, flowers and vegetal motifs are fairly common on textile but this kind of execution, this kind of uh, uh, sort of like treatment of the, of the images are something we mostly associate with paper and not with textile is something then that is again experimented with. So the boundary between like natural history archive then works on paper and then again like I mean bringing them back to textile. So all those boundaries are then sort of overlapped and instead of finding a conclusive answer for it, we find that to be left open to the viewers interpretation and how the viewers want to perceive them or for the artisans to think about the further possibilities of taking this exhibitions or like this kind of experiments. The other textile that we have in the right side of the screen is this is a very again it's an atypical Kalamkari hanging that we find but even in this one we find that blocks and silk screen are then sort of incorporated for making this uh, Kalamkari pieces and these are again this gigantic Kalamkari hangings which were produced and which was in one hand we find that some of those gigantic Kalamkari hangings which are there in some of the museum collections not unfortunately not in India but in, in the museum collections in Europe, in Japan and in USA. So some of those um, 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 textiles were almost sort of brought in life by this contemporary interventions during this exhibition and it was again it's a proud proclamation as I have mentioned earlier to show that what India is able to produce and this time from 1981 to 1991 is also uh, very important because this was also the time like by the late 1980s that India was opening up its market for the global audience and then with the new liberal economy in the late 1980s and early 1990s we find that India was certainly attracting the global investors in the Indian production sectors. So so this kind of um, display of skill and this kind of display of experiments even though it is there in the field of craft even though it is field of like I mean very specialized way of textile making it shows or it, it gives the message to the global audience that what India is capable of doing in terms of its dedication to making things in terms of like this highly skilled way of producing things and, and, and of course with the spirit of experimentation. So it's a, it's a blend between the, uh, the traditional aesthetics that, that is there that is established in the Indian subcontinent and that had been practiced for centuries but then with also with the contemporary sensibilities something that we see that was emergent after the uh, um, after this, this designers interventions in the late 20th century. So it's a mix 
mix of both we, we find that to be there and it was definitely uh, uh, displayed with, with great effort and, and this message was conveyed successfully to the global audience about uh, uh, what the Indian uh, craft sector and especially the textile sector is able to produce and sort of like I mean able to um, um, contribute to. Now when we think about this Vishwakarma exhibitions, we can certainly think in terms of like the perspectives which we can draw from the this larger narratives. But then this kind of exhibitions or this perspectives would also, this perspectives would also have their impact, their high impact in the artisanal sectors. So for example, here I want to talk about a little bit on this one Konya Chakra textile and that is this Kalamkari block printed textile that was produced in Polavaram in Machlipatnam and this same workshop that we have studied earlier in the module on Kalamkari making and uh, this is the workshop of late master Dyer Mukanteshwara Durao and in this one what we see that this Konya Chakra textile which we see in the right side of the screen that is catalogued as part of the master weaver this catalog in 1981 and this one Konya Chakra as I have already mentioned that that means that there are those corner motifs in this four corners and then then there is a chakra or a circular motif or a lotus motif at the center. So this is the Konya Chakra pattern that we find in this uh, textiles and in this squarish textiles those are there. So few of these textiles were produced during this preparation for the festival of India in Britain and one of the textile is still there with the workshop members in Polavaram and which is displayed in the left side of the screen and th this also gives a sense of like the scale of it, the scale which we have been constantly talking about. But then apart from the scale and the spirit of experimentation, what we also find is that some of the new dye recipes were given or like at least communicated to the dyers in Polavaram during this time and as the the, the master dyer, um, uh, late master dyer Mukanteshwara Durao and his son uh, Nageshwara Rao, they, they recall that a truckload of, of wooden blocks were brought to uh, Polavaram and then um, a number of those blocks which were um, um, earlier not available to them were sort of like I mean given to these dyers and the printers to experiment with and that is how this uh, this fine designs were created and then the block makers and the dyers and the printers there they also could take reference from what kind of blocks can be utilized for their practice in the future then some of the dye recipes which were sort of brought by the dye specialists and as well as like the officials of the weaver service center Hyderabad to Polavaram they were still being experimented with and they're still being practiced in this workshop in Polavaram because they stick to natural dyeing and as they have mentioned that those dye recipes did certainly help them to expand the range of colors which are uh, um, achievable by using natural dyes and moderns. So this kind of impact we certainly see that how of course that this kind of interventions they not only drew attention of the global audience to the Indian textiles but then it also has its impact in the grassroots level in the artisanal communities and they got to learn different things from them and those things were then experimented with and, and some of the traces of those experiments we can still find in this in the artisanal workshops today. And and this is not just this exclusive example of how this kind of impact was created by this exhibition but then the other artisans many other people for example uh, late uh, Kalamkari painter Gurapa Chittigaru and then uh, a Kalamkari uh, artist um, um, Ajit Das all of them they have recalled that how uh, the, their interaction with the people especially with Martin Singh that this kind of interventions and which were then showed them the way to continue these experiments further. Now some of the other experiments we also see during this time from 1980s are 
probably not directly connected to the master weavers exhibition but then like i mean the traces of it or perhaps like i mean this spirit of exhibition or the spirit of experimentations which were introduced to the artisanal communities during this time and as i have mentioned that it is not just like a one year intervention or one year project but it was a 10 year project for that reason this prolonged time during which the weaver service center the governmental bodies the scholars the researchers would work with the artisans so it opened up uh, a lot of different avenues for the artisans to experiment uh, with uh, newer forms in image making and that resulted in refreshing experiments that we see in this traditional textile sectors so one of the experiments we can find in the sector of making telia rumal so telia rumal is this again highly specialized form of double ikat weaving and in ikat weaving as we know that the yarns are first like resist dyed they are tied with a uh, thread like i mean in the in the bandni technique if we think that the the woven fabric is then like i mean tied with this yarn uh, or the threads and then it is dip dyed then in the ikat technique we see the yarn itself is then like tie dyed and then for double ikat both the warp and the weft would be tie dyed and that is how this solid blocks of color are created so if there is white color in the weft and uh, in the weft and then white color in the warp then the overlapping between them can only create this kind of block i mean this solid white color or else like i mean it would be a merge between like i mean two different colors so in this entire pattern what we see in the right side of the screen in this detail from atelier rumal we see all the solid colors which are produced that can be black white red and so on all of them are produced because of this warp and weft ikat and so this highly specialized again this double ikat weaving is something that was produced in the coastal town of chirala and part of andhra pradesh for centuries and this telia rumal which is it's a square format rumal it was used as turban cloth or or shoulder cloth and mostly it was used in the middle east in the desert climate and this telia rumal is something that we see that it was a uh, uh, sort of like the the yarn was treated with particular kind of oil and soda ash for and it was sort of like i mean continued uh, continually being treated this way so that i mean it it so it it gives particular kind of consistency to the fiber and which is also believed to soothe the uh, head or like the body when it is worn on on as a as a turban cloth or as a shoulder cloth so those are the reasons we find this telia rumals were significant historically now in the 1980s we find and from the 1970s we find that certain people for example lakshmipati gajam and then gajam govardhana so all of them they took the effort to sort of taking this the knowledge of ikat weaving not only uh, in in the in the part of like i mean in andhra pradesh but also disseminating it to parts of telangana today i mean that is that is like i mean of course it was also andhra pradesh in the 1970s 1980s but then what we see that today some of the uh, well known ikat weaving centers as puttapaka koyala gudam and so on all of them um, are are sort of like i mean uh, they they thrived because of some of those interventions by gajam govardhana and and the other people in the 1970s of course like i mean some form of ikat weaving they existed there before that as well but then like i mean this this a uh, large scale uh, uh, dissemination of knowledge that took place during this time that certainly encouraged a lot of artisanal communities to sort of take charge of this kind of production and and continuing them to uh, uh, make new kind of experiments now some of the experiments we also see in the uh, in the in the visuals that emerged in them so this is this other telia rumal that we have and it was woven by lakshmipati gajam and in this one we see that even though this form of making telia rumal for example this solid border and then this checkered motif in the corner all of them are continued and with this stripe borders here but then at the center of the rumal in this square rumal we see that i mean 
the space is then divided into smaller uh, squares and the squares in within the squares we find that there are motifs which are not traditionally utilized in the Telia rumals. The Telia rumal would have a non figurative geometric motifs, whereas this motifs we clearly see that I mean, how gramophone and then airplane, fish, and then like I mean, of course, boat and so on, all those motifs are then incorporated as part of like this new design scheme. So, this kind of interventions we find that came from the artisanal community when they have observed and studied this new form of experimentations those were taking place as part of this Vishwakarma exhibitions and also like with the, with the spirit of experimentation that was going on in the artisanal sectors during this time in the country. So, we see that the artisans themselves also took charge of it. It is not just like the designers conveyed certain kind of uh, ideals or image making processes and then they were absorbed by the artisans, but then in some cases we find that the artisans also took charge of their own practice and then they sort of redefine the practice that they have been practicing for generations. Perhaps example would be from this very well known family of the Khatris who are the Ajrak printers in Gujarat, in Damatka and also today in Ajrakpur. So, one of the foremost important Ajrak printer would be Siddiqui uh, Muhammad Bai Khatri and he was someone who was working in the post-independence India and was responsible for bringing back certain fitness in Ajrak printing. So, Ajrak printing as I have mentioned that this, this highly specialized resist and, 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 and block printed textile is, is uh, printed in both side of the fabric. So, it needs minute calculations and also like I mean since it goes through several uh, processes of, of preparing it. So, it, one needs to be highly careful in terms of executing it. So, for that what we see that uh, with, with uh, Muhammad Bai Khatri and then his sons like Abdul Jabbar Khatri and then Ismail Khatri and so on. So, all of them they sort of continued this spirit of making this ajrak as fine as possible and sort of like I mean which can be associated with the earlier form of ajrak there in the museum collections. So, both Abdul Jabbar Khatri and Ishmael Khatri they have extensively studied the museum collections, they have reached out to the international audience and with the intervention of the collectors and, and patrons in India and ab abroad we find them to have sort of like I mean they, they manage to empower themselves and in this image what we see that Adam Khatri is uh, standing here wearing this Ajra Kurta and Ajra Kurta is something we definitely do not see in the context of making this a uh, traditional Ajra fabrics, but here the difference is it is not really the designer who is making this intervention, but the uh, Ajrak printers themselves they take charge of this newness of utilizing Ajrak also with the different kind of design intervention and sort of redefining them when they are in charge of this newness. So, all this kind of experiments we see them to take place uh, um, and, and how we can see them to sort of go back to the spirit of experimentations in the 1980s with the Vishwakarma exhibitions. We will continue more on this topic in the next lecture. Thank you.